Hello everyone, welcome back to the Dork Side. I am the Dork in the Road and today we'll answer the question, can overweight people ride off-road motorcycles? Spoiler alert, of course they can. Adventure is for everyone, no matter your size or shape. Don't ever let anyone tell you different. But there are some unique challenges that come with being overweight and riding off-road motorcycles and we're gonna talk through those a little bit today. That's right everyone, I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy. So please consider subscribing and don't forget to turn on those notifications so that you know when I post awesome new content just like this. One of the most frequent questions that I get asked anytime I post a, a video about a specific bike or even sometimes the general riding videos is, can a heavy person ride this motorcycle? Is this motorcycle enough for someone who weighs 220, 250, 275, 300 pounds? Get that question a lot. When I bought my CRF 250L, I was 325 pounds. I rode at that weight for over two years. Rode trails, logging roads, on the highway, in the city, all over the place, in the snow, in the rain, in the mud, in the snow, in the sleet, in the sand. That bike carried me everywhere I ever asked it to take me and in and over and through some stuff that I probably shouldn't have asked it to carry me in and over and through. It never let me down. I'm here to tell you from personal experience that if you're overweight, if you're a large person and you're worried that you won't be able to enjoy the sport of dual sport adventure off-road dirt bike motorcycling, I'm telling you right now that's not true. Over the last two years, I've lost 80 pounds. Thank you, Keto. But I'm still comfortably in the overweight category, so I feel like my experience here might be helpful and enlightening to some of you. Everything you've seen me do on this channel has been done by an overweight person. So if I can do it, you can do it. Don't let anything stop you from getting out there and adventuring if that's something that you wanna do. I'm also gonna share some of the unique challenges that come with being an overweight rider and a few of the solutions that I found along the way. That's really the point of this video. So the first area that uh, being overweight presents some challenges in is gear. That probably doesn't surprise you. The selection of oversized motorcycle gear isn't as good, uh, and there are some challenges that come in terms of fit and things like that. So let me tell you kind of what I've run into and sort of some of the solutions that uh, I've leaned into along the way. It's just really hard to find gear that fits, both in the terms of the way that it's designed and just finding sizes that are big enough. Many gear stores don't carry them, and it's hard when you have to try things on and you're not exactly sure what the size is gonna be when you're ordering online because you have to pay to ship things back and forth. Sizing is all over the place, especially like European manufacturers versus American manufacturers. I wear a 3XL jacket in Alpine Stars, but an XL in Climb. So that can be frustrating and annoying sometimes as you're trying to find something that fits and will work for you. When you're overweight, your waist tends to be larger than average, and so you have to buy pants with larger waist sizes, but for some reason, many manufacturers also assume that you're very tall. The wider your waist size gets, the longer the legs get, which is very frustrating for me because I have a 30 inch inseam, so I do not need a pair of pants with a 34 or 36 inch inseam. Those don't fit me, and the knee armor hits me in about the shin or the ankle. With boots, if you have thicker calves, especially with like motocross boots or something that's tight, and has buckles, things like that. Uh, I had a hell of a time finding boots that would fit over my calves. That can be problematic and a concern, make it hard to find the right kind of boots. So here are a few solutions that I found along the way to a few of these issues. Number one, one of my favorite things is short, short pant sizes. The first pair of pants I found that actually fit me were a pair of Tour Master pants with a short size. Motorcycle pants tend to come in just like a size like XL or 40 and you have no control over the length of the leg but sometimes manufacturers will make like a 40 short right so the legs are shorter they'll fit better if you're like me a person with a large waist and short legs American brands in my experience tend to fit better uh, in fact, I just had my first experience where I actually had to send something back because it was too big. This climb jacket I just got arrived. I got a 2XL thinking that's what I wear in almost everything. And I had to send it back. It's actually the same as my regular jacket size and shirt size, so regular XL. So that was cool. Icon is a brand that I've had really good luck with, with sizing, both in terms of things fitting well and about like you'd expect. And they carry and manufacture larger sizes. So those American brands are more adept, shall we say, at fitting a more American figure. So if you're overweight or a larger person, I would look at American 
obscure manufacturers over say some of the European manufacturers that tend to have smaller sizes. If you have a cycle gear near you, it's probably the biggest, the most common motorcycle gear retailer in America. But if you can go there and try stuff on, one, first of all, big advantage. They tend to carry bigger sizes just in a limited selection, but you can order stuff there to the store and then return it to the store. So you don't have to pay to ship it back and forth if it doesn't fit. And that's really handy. I've paid a lot a few times to ship some things back from ordering online. So if you can go into the store and try it on, or if they don't have it, order it to the store to save yourself shipping back and forth if it doesn't fit. Highly recommend that tactic. Use the size charts and actually do measurements. Don't assume that the measurements are gonna line up with your jean size or anything like that. Get a cloth tape measure and actually measure yourself and then compare it to the manufacturer specific size chart. That's important because it varies so much between manufacturers, but in general, their size charts are pretty close, and often if you're on revzilla.com or cyclegear.com or something, they'll mention if it fits, does it fit small, does it fit big. You can usually find someone commenting on that on Amazon too, so keep an eye out for that. Adjustable knee armor is a lifesaver, so if you have short legs like me, making sure that you order pants that have adjustable knee armor will save you. So the default knee armor position on a pair of pants that's too long for me is usually too low, but I, if I can adjust it up, I can slide it up onto my knee and make sure that that armor sits where it's supposed to be when I'm in the riding position. Another tactic, if you have friends that are similarly sized to you, is try their gear on. And even if they're not exactly the same size as you, you can at least try on their gear and see, okay, this almost fits, so a size bigger would be good, or this is too big, I wanna go size down from this. Uh, sizing within companies tends to be relatively consistent, so if, if there's a piece of gear from a manufacturer that you think you're interested in, but you can't find that piece of gear in a store to try on, but you can find another piece of gear Gear, so you can find another jacket by the same manufacturer and try that on. The sizing is usually pretty consistent. So an Icon XL should be about the same no matter what model jacket you're wearing. As far as the calf issue, the calves being too big to fit in the boots, many manufacturers will make lower height boots. It's a little less safe, but if you wear like knee and shin armor like I do anyway, it mitigates some of the loss of protection and you can buy it the ankle height. Get as high as you can comfortably wear, but lower height boots can sometimes help if you have big calves. All right, so that's gear. The other question I get a lot is about bikes. People are always asking, am I too big for this bike? And I'm gonna tell you that the answer to that is almost always no. How do I know? One, I owned a Grom when I was 325 pounds. A Grom is a 125cc motorcycle. I rode it all over town. I rode it on the highway. I rode it off-road. I explored and did all kinds of stuff on it. So it took me everywhere I wanted it to go and then some. If a 125cc could handle me at 325 pounds, then you're gonna be fine on a 250cc or bigger motorcycle, no problem. I can also ride my daughter's DRZ 125L, and I rode her 110 back in the day when I was 320 pounds. So in terms of can the motorcycle carry you from point A to point B? Almost every motorcycle will. Like unless you're riding on a PW50 and even then it's gonna go just pretty slowly. Any bike will get you where you need to go. The question is how quickly and capably will it be able to do so? If you're heavier, then this, the bike will be a little slower and the suspension will have to work harder. And as long as you know that going in and take steps to mitigate it to a degree, you'll be fine. It doesn't really slow you down much at all. Just know that bikes tend to come from the factory setup for really a smaller than average rider. People always say it's in the 150 pounds range. So um, if you're buying a bike stock, a new bike, it's worth either asking the dealership that you're buying it from to at least adjust the preload on the rear shock for you. And it depends on the motorcycle how adjustable the suspension is. My 250L preload adjustable on the rear, that's it. The DRZ is fully adjustable front and back and so I have a lot better options on that. Same for my Africa Twin. If you're heavier, Suspension adjustments, number one, is a great thing to start with, but um, upgrades is also something else to think about because that suspension is gonna be your limiting factor and getting it set up and sprung correctly for your weight will have a massive impact on your quality of life while you're riding and how much you enjoy it. And if you don't wanna have to deal with it, get an adventure bike. My Africa Twin has a thousand cc's and does not care how much I weigh, doesn't care if I strap another 100 pounds of gear to the back or cargo or whatever. It just depends on what you wanna do and what you wanna ride, but a bigger bike is always gonna be more capable and frankly they tend to be set up a little better for heavier riders just because they're heavier bikes but you can ride any bike a 250 will be just fine for you no matter your weight a 400 is even more fun bigger is better probably if you're a larger person but that's not to say that 250s and smaller are disqualified a tw200 will do the job just ride the bike that makes the most sense to you and you can adjust it to make it work for you. And finally, I'm gonna say something that's maybe a little controversial, but I hope that as a person who is currently overweight and was recently even more overweight than I am now, you'll understand that I'm saying this in the hopes that it might motivate someone. 
conventional wisdom is the cheapest, easiest way to upgrade the performance of your motorcycle is to lose weight. Now, I know that's easier said than done. I spent years trying to lose weight until I found something that stuck, and I'm still overweight, but I have managed to lose 80 pounds and keep it off. The motivation for that, in large part, came from motorcycling. I wanted my motorcycles to handle better and be faster. I wanted to have more fun, and honestly, one of the things that really motivated me was the idea that I'd get to buy new gear. Now that I've lost 80 pounds, one of the things that motivates me to keep it off is knowing that my gear will no longer fit if I put pounds back on. So that's literally the first thing that crosses my mind whenever I wanna reach for a Snickers bar or something. That's my personal experience. I know that losing weight is difficult. I hate when people are like, hmm, just don't be fat anymore. Like that's not how it works. But if that might help motivate you, I throw it in here just because it's something that was helpful and motivational to me personally. I'm here to tell you that if you want to get out there and ride, you should not let anyone stop you. Don't let anyone tell you that your weight in some way precludes you or makes you incapable or ineligible to have amazing two-wheel adventures out there in the world. That's simply not true and I'm living proof of it. Adventure is for everyone, no matter your shape or size. All you need is a motorcycle and a desire to get out there and explore. And I'm here to help you along the way. That is my goal, to help you find the motivation and knowledge that you need to get out into the woods, into the world of motorcycling and explore safely and have a hell of a fun time. If you have questions or thoughts or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I know this is a controversial subject. I'm just sort of hoping that my personal experience might help motivate someone and, and I wanted to kind of speak from the heart about what it's like to be overweight and the challenges that you face as a motorcyclist and kind of answer all this sort of gatekeeping garbage that's out there that I hear from time to time. Don't let anyone tell you you can't ride, because you can. So if you liked the video, please feel free to hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Helps YouTube know that the video was awesome and to share it with other people. I want to thank all my patrons and channel subscribers for all their support. Thank you very much. If you're just thinking about getting started in the world of dual sport or adventure motorcycling, check out my videos on best beginner dual sports and best beginner adventure bikes. I'll link those in the description. But for now and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent! Thank you.